this chill water actuator is not activating it is a pneumatic actuator it's basically got next to no pressure coming to it uh, it does have a tag I think it's on the other side where it should give us the actuation pressure range but regardless even before I dive into that uh, I, I'm just not I'm not seeing any pressure here uh, they did do the temporary block open here just to get some kind of flow on it so we need to go look at the uh, the main control panel and see just what readings that they have there what is actuated and, and do some testing there with the pressures and see how that correlates over to here and go from there looking at our main pneumatic relay panel here there's got multiple air handlers being controlled end of the day this one down here is our problem child so this is what is controlling the uh, supply air pressure I'm sorry this is what's controlling the chill water uh, flow valve uh, the actuator valve um, anyway so you've got main coming in you've got your sensing tube and then you've got the output going to the actuator runs through this EP you know controlling when it gets to work when it doesn't everything appears to be correlating properly here uh, I am getting the output that I'm seeing at the valve as well so I know I'm maintaining pressure I have a feeling that there may be something going on with the chill water actuator itself those blocks you saw that were there we're going to pull those blocks out see how the actuator responds after that and then troubleshoot it from there get get hooked up in series with the signal so from here we're going to pump up the actuator so one we want to pull the blocks out to do some testing we also want to this will be a test to see if the actuator is even functioning Basically, we've got two options. We can either try to find the a kit that will fit this diaphragm and, and redo this actuator assembly, basically rebuild it. Or we've got to try to find a replacement, which I don't have the greatest prospects for. So, uh, But it is definitely not actuating the way it's supposed to not so fast so previous text we, so we took those blocks out to just for the sake of the of confirmation and uh, what they did is they, they literally drove the the uh, actuator all the way to its maximum point and then it, they shoved two those two two or four blocks in there at that point that's the reason why we didn't see any motion. Normally, in, in, a, in a scenario like like that, you'd either pull the actuator head off and just manually force the valve and, and get it to stick, or you'd give yourself just enough space to get those blocks back out. Well, they didn't do that. Regardless, uh, the diaphragm is functioning. It's got a 10 PSI uh, dead head travel so now the question becomes we're only getting 5 psi on this earlier the complaint was they weren't getting enough pressure um, they wasn't flowing enough chill water for those who have never seen it this is old school zoning control so each one of those is a different zone running to a different part of the uh the space and let's go this is how they did it way back in the day before they had vavs and all that so you'd have this you might have duct heaters or a hot water coil uh and then you'll have like a cold and hot deck in the air handler so this particular one looks like we've only got chill water which would tell me that we would have reheat coils down in the truck the ductwork 
So anyway, just kind of an interesting look at a real old school system. These are all your returns. That one up there is gonna be your outside air coming in, dumping into the space. Well, my initial diagnosis of a diaphragm issue here was I'm, I'm, I'm uh, changing my position on it. I think we got something else going on. We need to hook all this back up, dive a little deeper. We got everything hooked up. So this is our main line coming in. This is the, uh, this is our just testing line. Put a gauge with a T body in. We're gonna see what this builds up to. It's been going to five PSI. Uh, what we're gonna do next is we need to get a, um, uh, a temperature gauge on the supply right here after the chill water coil and see what our uh, supply air temperature is doing. But as that supply air temperature uh, changes or decreases, we need to, uh, we, we should see this gauge start to represent that pressure. And as we need more flow, we should see the pressure increase, giving us more chill water through the coil. So that is our temperature sensor we're currently testing. We unplug it, the temperature controller back at the main panel is definitely responding. Uh, when we unplugged it, it completely dropped pressure going to the actuator. I'm gonna plug it now and see if, uh, see if it comes back up and responds. Well, it is definitely this receiver controller so I ended up setting it way down on temp and it, it I finally got it to respond and it's not coming back up when it's supposed to I mean I mean it it's acting very strange it's kind of sporadic it's not very consistent it also needs a new dryer but um, this is our sensing pressure and so what has happened is as we force that valve open you know through the set point our sensing pressure has began to come down and as it's come down we've maintained uh, set point pressure uh, supply pressure to the actuator but um, you know we are dropping in the supply air temperature but I just not seeing what we should see so we're going to recommend replacing this receiver and going from there, you can see they've they've had to change several of them before. We just spoke to the customer. They've given approval to go ahead and do this repair. In the meantime, we've pulled the little keeper pin out of the uh, shaft here, and we're just going to let that chill water flow. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything given this setup, especially just temporarily. That way, the kitchen that this serves will be able to cool down and maintain, you know, some sort of of comfort while we're trying to get parts i'm really hoping they got what we need on hand it's bleeding 15 psi main air power it's bleeding it at a at a point oh one five or oh one seven value uh inch per sec, uh, inch per minute value into this line and this thing is bleeding off such that the back pressure the back pressure on this thing is at zero degrees Fahrenheit is equal to three PSI. And at 100 degree Fahrenheit is equal to 15 PSI. Critical that you maintain this. This, this needs to be no, no more than 20 pounds. People that jack their regulators up over 20 pounds because they're trying to make up for uh, leaks in the system is putting band-aids on tires. Anyways, 15 is correct, 15, three to 15. Uh, 12 PSI. Well, that concludes today. We're gonna to keep the call going. I'm gonna go back in the morning and get this uh, receiver installed and we'll go from there. I really appreciate Tim with Amcon. Shout out to them for just, just providing such a great service. You know, when it comes to, you know, any kind of automation or, you know, even the pneumatics, you know, these, these guys are absolutely incredible and just really helping guys out out here and and you know ask them to you know do that quick little presentation it's not something that anybody really it's it's just such a lost art anyway i'm not gonna go on about it point is appreciate it tim amcon controls here in, in uh, texas 
And we're back. So, got our new receiver controller. Gonna get this bad boy switched out. Shouldn't be too big a deal. And uh, yeah, we'll get it set up, get it calibrated, make sure it's all jiving. So we've got it installed now. Had to clean these tubes up. Anyway, you've got your output, your main, your CV or your control controlled variable, which is your transmitter. Uh, so yeah, right now transmitter signal's coming in pretty hot. We need to go plug everything back in and make sure it's all set up on that actuator now. And then we can go from there, uh, just making sure it all tunes in, controls the way I'm wanting it to, so forth, so forth. So uh, I need to get with the building and go from here. So we've got the actuator hooked back up. Really good sign. We're fully, fully engaged. Going 55 on the supply, on the cold deck. That is absolutely incredible. This is what we needed to have happen. Checking all these zone dampers. So again, the way this is set up is this supply, each one of these is a different zone coming off the air handler and they're going to just different areas inside the kitchen. Anyway, there's a pneumatic thermostat that controls these, uh, these valves and what they're doing is they, they have the, the, the duct here split in half. So the, this half of the duct is uh, down in here where these dampers are, is a offset damper that is opening and closing just return air, uh, bypassing what's known as the cold deck. And then the other half is, is again, it's, a, it's another offset damper. So one's like this, one's like this and it is controlling the cold deck side of the airstream so as it needs cold air it opens up the cold deck closes down the hot deck or the uh this would be the return deck also known as a hot deck um anyway and then vice versa on the other and so you know if it, if it starts getting too cold it just switches back over anyway all of these except for this last one are all open to full cold deck um and they default to cool based off of the spring position and all. So that, 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 it's not a guarantee these stats are working, but at least they are for sure pushing cold air and it is warm in, in the kitchen as it always is. Anyway, that's confirmed. We got the actuator confirmed and set up. We're gonna move back over. We're gonna move back over to uh, the receiver and keep calibrating and tuning over there. We've got it set in there. We've got it tuned in. Uh, right there where it's set right now, it's, it's able to maintain right at about 55 degrees. And just barely off of the standard set point. So right dead center ought to be right at about 50 degrees. So just slightly off of that, which we, we've confirmed that at the air handler as well. And uh, I've got our uh, gain or, or derivative set as well. So yeah, no, we're looking good uh, I'm going to get everything hooked back up and This bad boy is done and ready to roll uh, Another good one good call Hope you all enjoyed it. Remember guys uh, MTT, you know make time for your family uh, you really got to take care of your spouses, you know, and just we cannot forget that we can't lose that You know at any point we're going into summer things are crazy things are busy, but No matter all of it 
we've got to maintain our families uh, first and foremost. Uh, just without our families, what are we doing? I'll catch y'all in the next one.